Okay, Ready now you have it, three so. minutes to go to present your presentation. Okay? okay? I will start the clock. So, good morning to everybody. This is our project called Common Sense, and this is our team. We are focusing on Sveco uh, sensor. So, uh, So, uh, we started with the definition of the problem because uh, clearly this can sound uh, uh, kind of naive, but is not so naive. Uh, a solution to the problem of global warming is a mix, in our opinion, of means and education. So, we started questioning if we have the means and if we have the education. So, we did an online survey during these 24 hours online, and guess what? We found that we have sensor. We have uh, already a portal, dataportal.stockholm.se, but what? People don't use it. So why should we, at the beginning, spend money on implementing new solution on what we already have? What should we not deploy and exploit already what we have? And uh, are people willing to pay for this service? Here we did uh, some analysis, and uh, the majority of people, if the system works in a better way, they're willing to pay. So. We decided to think a bit outside of the box and create a lean startup. Yeah, so the startup takes place on the building block level where, uh, where communities are and people know each other. Uh, not on a national, not on a regional level. Uh, so it's a non-for-profit uh, social startup uh, which is crowdfunded and owned by uh, the community. So that becomes uh, their baby. Uh, this, is the, this is the data structure, information stream. So here you see the data portal for Stopcon that already exists. That uh, will become our database, our apps, the devices that the people use. Uh, they live in uh, the communities on a building block scale, uh, which uh, provides the uh, database of Stockholm with new information. Uh, we want to make it uh, flexible uh, so that new systems can enter this, uh, this infrastructure so that the app, the application can be adaptable to, uh, to, do, to new developments. Basically, we want to uh, educate uh, citizens to become a smart citizen for a smart city because we think it's the best powerful combination. And uh, in this application, we will educate through feedbacks uh, people on how to behave and uh, on a micro scale, on a, on a, a micro scale, on a macro scale, on how uh, is the quality of uh, the commune where they are living. Who is going to pay for this? Uh, the community, of course, because uh, uh, for the online survey we have done, we saw that uh, people are really willing to uh, invest on a, a project of this type. So people will afford an initial cost of 10 crowns a year for this application. This application will give them data, and data gi will give them some feedbacks. Clearly, the, um, the, with the money we get, we can invest in more sensor and application to get uh, the uh, reliability and the precision of the measurement uh, even more focused. So what's our sensor? Our sensor are human being. Why we invest on hardware and sensor? If we have uh, humans as a sensor, if we use them, they give us data, we uh, combine that data, whatever we already have, and show the uh, user like what they can use for, like in data we can divide in different format, like environmental, social, and use that data that we already have with combination of social feedback. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry about the little bit technical problem you had there. Yeah, uh, yeah thanks. Okay, this is uh, the next team. How has the work gone for you? Is uh, it okay? Yeah. It Hey, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So our team is a Greenway, uh, and it's me, Rustam, uh, Cheryl Lam, yes, I'm sorry, Carol Lampos, uh, Paulina, Dmitris, and Lydia. And here is our presentation. So we are working on the sensor systems. Perfect. I think it's better if you stand here, and if the rest of the team stands on this place, because the people will see better oh, there. It's even better for me. Yeah. Okay. Just wait for the for the clock to start. Center. Are you ready? Uh, so, so the Stockholm is the fastest growing city in Europe. So the population of the Stockholm is expected to be doubled by 2024, which means the pollution will be increased drastically. 
so the pollutants such as CO2, NO2, PM2.5, PM10, they will be uh, drastically increased in these years. So we need some smart solutions to tackle these problems. And what is our idea? Our idea is to use the existing infrastructure and improve it. So we decided to, uh, in order to collect the data that we need to fight the problem, we decided to put some sensors on the buses. So in Stockholm there are 75 bus lanes, which means that we only need 75 sensors to uh, cover the whole st city, the whole Stockholm city. Um, so when we collect all this data, this data will collect like uh, the pollution levels, the allergens in the air, and the noise pollution. So what happens when we have all this data? What we can do with it? So our idea is to create an app that will uh, promote and help the well-being of the citizens of the Stockholm. So this is the demo of how the, our uh, application would look like. So it will basically visualize the pollution of the streets of the city. So as you can see, it will uh, use the color maps to code the pollution uh, in different streets. For example, the green uh, color will represent the less polluted areas, where the uh, red lines, uh, the streets, will represent the most polluted areas. So our application will uh, give us, give the person who uses the app the route from uh, point A to point B, which will try to avoid all the most polluted areas. And by the way, uh, this may represent not only the air pollution, it may represent the uh, allergens in the air, like uh, pollen or mold, or even it can represent the noise uh, in the streets. Right, uh, so how are we gonna <laughs> fund uh, this project? We found out that there is a European committee that actually funds su such projects as a smart city solutions. And in 2014, uh, they've granted 25 million euros to, uh, to such projects. And 10% of them were given to ICT-based solutions. So we believe that our uh, application, our project, will have a great chances of uh, getting the money we need. But we also understand that we need to maintain our system and we need to actually hopefully expand in the future. And to do so, uh, we, dis uh, we have to monetize our app. But we really believe that the app should be free to users since we, uh, want, it, uh, we want to promote the health and well-being. But we believe that uh, we can really uh, use the targeted adver advertisement because who is using our apps? These are the people who travel a lot, who go outside a lot, who are concerned about their health and about their well-being. So we can... Uh, advertisement companies know what kind of people will uh, use the app so they can promote the products that they need. And yes, uh, thank you for the presentation and travel with green. Thank you very much. So, do we have another team on this side? As you've seen, I, I, I've Increase the time a little bit. So you have a little bit more than three minutes. When, but when the clock is ring, ringing, the time is out. But you haven't, don't have to stop really on on that word. So if you want to, do. okay. Uh, could you present your team a little bit, and then I start the clock. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, we are the team Smart Module connecting the city with its citizens, and we are Jessica, Linda, Oreo, Dev, and Adam in this group. And yeah, this is our idea, the smart oh. module. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I will start the clock right now. Yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, so, as I said, uh, it's a smart module, and our uh, like thought was that we want to connect the citizens of the city more uh, to the city with feedback and uh, like information. Um, so, uh, what we were thinking was to make a little smart box, kind of, where you can... Uh, uh, have Wi-Fi so that uh, all the people that pass this little smart box they can uh, use it to access the data and find information. And actually, we were thinking about using it uh, with already existing applications in the city, like in bus stations, uh, in lamp posts, in parking machines, and then they are placed in different regions in Stockholm where it uh, will be. Um, like profits, uh, good to have them. Uh, and the thinking is then that 
on these little smart boxes, we will have um, both the municipi municipality and citizen communication, uh, where it will be like relevant local information on the smart box. Um, error reports and updates can be made on this box from the citizens. If they are passing by and have noticed that something isn't working, then they can go there. Uh, also wishes for improvements uh, that might be needed. Um, surveys by the municipalities, if they have questions about how the inhabitants are experiencing or if they want to change something. Uh, and also to collect data from the uh, people uh, that live in the areas. Uh, also, if it could be a fun thing to have to our tourists, uh, so when they're here visiting, they can also just connect to these little smart boxes and find information about what is relevant to see in this local area and uh, which are the nice places to go and eat and stuff like that. And um, yeah, so kind of the, the Wi-Fi is more or less the, the thing that it would attract people to go here and get information. And it's a dynamic Wi-Fi adjusting bandwidth based on the number of people around the hotspots. Um, and other points that would be interesting to have is the community meeting point, which we feel is a bit missing here in Sweden today at least. Uh, so it could be interesting to have these as billboards and to post events uh, in the local region, like what people are doing and, uh, and uh, things that could be interesting for them. And also, uh, we were talking about the shared economy, thinking with the little boxes that the people can go there and they can upload and say like, hey, I have this uh, tool that you can use and come and borrow. Uh, or, of course, other things like services or, or food and, uh, and other things like that. Um, so the application would look a bit like this. Um, we have here, it's an event alert, so it's saying that, hey, it's an event going on. Uh, here it says, uh, Tuvalu is performing tonight at the location near you. And then you can either see more details about the event, or you can just dismiss it, depending on if you're interested or not. Um, and the next one is a question from the municipality. Are you satisfied with the quality of your green areas? And then you can just say yes or no. So it's very simple questions. Um, and the last one is a notification about something that is not working in the city. And in this example, it is the subway. So the SL is sending out a notification that uh, there is a stop between Sink and Stam and uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this was just some practicalities we also uh, took up, but uh, yeah, time's up, unfortunately. <laughs> Thank you very much. Next team up for the city sensors. Yeah. yeah. Could you present your team a little bit and then I start the clock. Yep. So hello everybody. Um, we are conscious. I am Gaurav and that's Perulov. And um, this is what it is. Yes. Uh, conscious is a real time and cheap bunch of sensors that um, monitors and gives you very actionable insights on air, noise, and light pollution for both indoor and outdoor environments, especially uh, major cities around the world. Um, we started to focus on air and sound initially in our prototype, which, well, which we'll show you uh, soon. Uh, what's exciting is a lot of people are moving into cities and it's getting highly congested. And uh, you'll quickly realize that you know, everywhere you go, it's a lot of pollution. Uh, it's it's stuffy, sometimes it's too loud, and you feel uncomfortable. We want to be able to empower citizens to take actions themselves, but also government agencies like City of Stockholm and so on. Uh, we, we still believe that as much as you think there is a lot of information about this, there isn't. So first is the data problem, and secondly, it's the insight problem. What will you do? A quick example is if you go to a very crowded place in Stockholm, uh, you might realize that there might be some allergic uh, things in the air. I am asthmatic, and so I am very allergic to PM 2.5. Uh, com small particles, and quickly I start coughing, but I want to know about it. Uh, so if we can just quickly go to the demo, we built a bunch of sensors and some graphs, uh, which is connected to the sensors. Um, here, Posan will show you a bunch. 
Uh, since we don't have a screen, these are the real graphs of the sensors that we have here. On top, you'll see the carbon dioxide sensor. And if we cover it, for instance, it can get very, very stuffy. Uh, and then what we did was we made sure that if it hits a specific threshold, which um, you feel is uncomfortable, you quickly get a notification on, your, on, on his, on his um, uh, smartwatch. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, this is what we did. And I feel that as much as outdoor is important, indoor as well, because you have the impact to change what's inside. Yesterday I was in a meeting and it felt like it was getting so stuffy uh, that we had to open the door. How can we create such smart notifications, some alerts that are not just data here, that's 50 parts per million carbon dioxide. But here, let's open the window uh, so we are all uh, having better lives. So that's very similar. We can deploy this for less than $150 around uh, per device, or even lesser around Stockholm and major cities, and make us more aware and conscious. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, can I get the mic? So. Next team, maybe you could present your team a little bit, and then uh, I will start the clock. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, we are Paulina, David, and also Andreas. We're from the computer science program at KDH. And we are doing the Suico City Sensors okay, challenge. So now, something that you can measure with sensors is noise. And noise can be a big problem in a city environment. Noise contributes to higher stress levels, increased blood pressure, and other harmful health effects for both humans and wildlife. Now, so make it easy, to make it easier for city planners to reduce and take measurements uh, of, uh, uh, of noise levels, they need, they need information about the noise. So there are models that can predict noise levels. But since modeling uh, sound is very hard, and especially outdoors, these measurements, these models are not always very reliable. So therefore, measurements would be better. And right now, the method of measuring noise is driving around with a car with a microphone on it, stopping in some different places, and measuring the noise there for a short period of time. So we instead uh, propose putting small, cheap sensors on uh, buildings or lampposts, and um, using these to, because with these we can take measurements for longer periods of time and also on all different times of day. Uh, so we propose that putting these up and maybe before and after some big change that could reduce or increase noise. So to go with this, we have this visualization uh, where we show the noise around the sensors as vibrations and color. Uh, so you can see that there are cars driving by these houses, and they react to this noise from the cars by showing color and vibrating. And uh, so as a city planner, you can look at this, and then you can see that behind this beautiful park, there are some houses that also react to the noise. So then maybe you put up a, a sound barrier to fix this, and then you can compare the data from before and after. So here we see with the sound barrier, that the noises in the background react much less to, the, uh, to this noise. And in this way, you can see what measurements are good for reducing noise, and uh, learn and improve the city, and also improve the health for all of us. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you very much. This is going rather fast. So, uh, could you present your team a little bit? Maybe standing here. Yes, so, uh, hi. Uh, we are Team Greenkeeper, and this is Jakob, Isha, and Elias. Okay, start. So Greenkeeper is about um, tracking your impact and make green choices. 
Um, so reprogramming the city is about making the city smarter with the help of technology. So what if we could use this theory when it comes to the city's human capital? Let's use technology to make humans smarter and increase our functionalities and services to better benefit the society. In short, reprogramming the human behavior. Um, so we want to implement technology in the urban infrastructure that's specifically linked to people's ecological footprint, such as recycling stations and transportation. The purpose is to encourage people to make green choices that will minimize their negative impact and increase their positive impact on the society and environment. It can be used as gamification, but it's not just about competition. It's about being a part of a shift towards a greener community. So in short, it's like a karma count, but digital and measurable. And here comes a demo. All right, so this is the website we built, uh, and it basically is, uh, consists of a few features. Uh, for instance, uh, we can see each deposit that is made by a user uh, will uh, come up here on the screen and uh, yeah, show everybody uh, what he or she has deposited. And uh, you can track your own progress uh, with these graphs to see how you're doing, uh, how, for instance, the last month has been in uh, aluminium recycling and whatnot. Um, so this is th the main user interface. And um, uh, we also want to, uh, to incorporate um, maybe vendors and, uh, and partners in this, such as Myrna, where you can uh, leave your old uh, clothes. And this would be uh, like a user interface for them. So um, the technology we want to use uh, with this is uh, basically either uh, using sensors uh, for uh, RFID or uh, NFC scanning. So, um, or um, until that is possible, you can use just basic QR codes. For instance, when you leave your uh, bottles at, a <laughs> at, a st at the store, you get a receipt. You can scan your receipt with your telephone and this data will be uploaded to your profile on Greenkeeper. So you track your progress that way. Um, and yeah. The data in the long run can, you know, be used to generate uh, insights such as this used for, I don't know, uh, city planning uh, or other stakeholders to be able to optimize maybe recycling, um, recycling patterns and whatnot. Uh, yeah, so this is, this is the initial sort of iteration of it. Uh, and we think that the benefits of this thing will be a fun and rewarding way of you know, uh, recycling and contributing to your community while keeping track of what the community itself is doing to uh, help make the environment better. And, um, yeah, uh, accumulated data also for stakeholders would be a great way to, you know, keep that going. <laughs> you want to finish? No, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Maybe you could get up on the stage. Can, can, we, can, we add, can we add some drama, like a little bit? Because we have a video. Get some yeah, a little bit less lights. <laughs> uh, I, I think for the, for the video recording, we need to have some lights ah, up okay, here. Okay. So, yeah, probably. I'll probably work out. Could you stand up here? Uh, guys, can you bring it up? Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, this is a. It's a physical. Nice. Okay, could you present your team a little bit, and then I guess you have a, another kind of presentation here. Yeah. Well, it's both like a classical one and the additional one. Um, so we are team Hippie Hippos. And we decided to go like really deep into the problem of the Stockholm city. Um, let's start. Yeah, happy he was saying hello again. Yeah. Urbanization means that our cities are expanding 
existing infrastructures can't keep up with the growth. The road work is outsourced to a lot of different entrepreneurs who does daily checkups and maintenance, territory-based, and collects only partial data. The problem with our current system is that these entrepreneurs can't be everywhere at all times, and the long planning process is based on estimations and calculations. How can we be sure that these decisions are correct? What if we could make monitoring more efficient and make decisions based on real-time data while simultaneously decreasing the CO2 from the daily controls and maintenance and also divide resources where they're actually needed? I'm going to install this solution to the bus engine. Basically, what we wanted to talk that the city can actually use old phones which were submitted for a cycle for, and using also only accelerometer and GPS and make efficient work of all kind of contractors and basically replace a lot of contractors, adding a lot of transparency. Well, and we are going to show how. Just delete us. Yeah. yeah, just delete us. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. So the idea is uh, this is a bus. And this is a charge microphone and uh, a bus for this. Hello. So the basic idea is that uh, this pool is a bus. And we decorate it nicely. <laughs> and this is a, a normal device. It can be a tablet or it can be a phone. But in this case, it's a very cheap Android phone, a uh, uh, tablet that we no longer use. The idea is that you take an uh, old phone, install our app, which can be uh, installed as an app or as a service. I th yeah, I think the service is like more. Now we're gonna do a little demo here. So if you pull it, yeah. So as you see, as, as it rides along the road, if it bumps against some obstacles, it will communicate it to the server and then it will update. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's the demo uh, spirit. Uh, but the, uh, yeah, basically, the idea is super simple that we're going to use old phones. It's, uh, we can recycle them uh, uh, in the second run and give it another life. And we can just drop it anywhere on the bus or anywhere in the taxi. And it will be basically uh, feeding probably from the uh, vehicle's power system. So we don't, uh, we don't need any batteries or anything. And then it could be. Uh, syncing data over wireless or over uh, G, uh, 3G or 4G network if you have it on device. So the main point is to reuse old phones. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have another team doing the sensors? Yeah, over there we have. One of the teams should go over to that side, I think. No, you have specially that. Okay, then we have. I have to some do some talk between them. Okay, uh, next team. So, could you please introduce your team a little bit first, and then yeah. I start the clock. We are uh, uh, the team Green Placemaking. Uh, I am uh, David Sandlin, and here we have Anton Fyodorov. And uh, over there is uh, Julia Zuk. <coughs> so, um, we know quite a lot about sustainability. We know quite a lot about uh, environmental um, sustainability. But what is quite unclear and needs to be talked about more is social sustainability. And a big part of that is creating meetings, making people connect. How do you create good meetings? What is a good place? There is a concept called place making, uh, a space making, and, a, and an idea called the power of 10 plus. This is basically a theory on what makes a place good uh, 
interactive space where people go. Part of this is that there should be more than 10 activities at place and that the local people can take part in making these activities. This also may create good meetings where people connect and talk with their friends, new acquaintances uh, and, and contacts uh, and connect the city to itself. And how do we bring this together? How can sensors and digital connection help create good places and good meetings? Our idea is to make appealing public spaces and sensor-packed Wi-Fi hotspots that uh, use proof design from Singapore. We're going to promote Stockholm actually as a green city, which is very innovative and uh, the green tech capital of Scandinavia. We're going to use places that will be self-aware with an internal sensor network and uh, give hyperlocal news to locals and help tourists green points of interest. It's really easy to begin with uh, our project. We're going to begin with a cost-effective pilot in a well-visited central park. And uh, the idea is to cover lamp posts in green plants and make them interactive. So uh, they will provide free Wi-Fi coverage and they will have a link to other parks like this one to engage users. And here is an example of the tech side inside a lamppost. It's covered around and it contains different sensors that collect live data about pollution, about the air, about the amount of people who are nearby, and they also control the lighting. So uh, all of this data will be made public and visible to the awareness of the people like this billboard. We expect to um, that uh, one place will cost up to half a million kroners, uh, up to, um, and and uh, we expect that the ones that would pay for this would be the cities, uh, store owners, property owners, because the values around the spaces will go up. Uh, we expect that people, uh, green tech companies and others would invest because there will be money in this and it's not a high cost uh, for a big change in a park like installing stuff, 100,000, 200,000, it's not a lot. Um, and any age group. Everyone likes to make a selfie, so we also pro prom uh, promote a new conception around selfie. It's green fee or green selfie. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Do we have another team? Thank you. Okay, could you present your team a little bit? And then yes, I'll start uh, hello everyone. Uh, we are team Lugna Lungan, and here we have Emma, Olivia, Johan, and Erik, and I am Linnea. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, we all know that air pollution is something bad, right? Uh, we all know it, especially you here. We have listened to lots of stats about it here today. But what do we actually know in detail about all these pollutions? Isn't it just okay to just take the bike instead of driving your car and everything will be all right? Okay, so we present to you your lungs. So this is a real-time visualization of the air quality in the, in the position where you are right now. So we, we imagine this to be a, a display in the city, maybe in a park or in, in the subway and uh, you can see in real time what are you breathing at this moment. Uh, we can see the colors here displaying uh, the different kind of pollutions. So we have, for example, particles in the air uh, and uh, ozone and lots of other bad stuff. But you can also see that what you can do about it right now. 
And you can also find out that it, you have different values and breathing different things at different times of the, of the day. Um, so you can take immediate action and you actually get some tips right here. So by seeing this every day on your way to work, you can learn how to change your schedule according to this. And you can, for example, uh, choose to drive your car in a different area where you learn that there is, uh, where it's better. <coughs> so, why should you do this? Well, you all know that you live in this. You live in the problem. What we do is we bring you the problem solving. The problem solving to, to take some action, not somewhere else, not far away on the other side of the country, not tomorrow, but right here and right now where you are at this moment. Thank you. Thank you for that. How many teams are left for um, city sensors? We have one there and we have one, one here. Any more for, oh, we have one here as well. So uh, then we should go over here. Yeah, and present your team a little bit and then I'll start the clock. Hello everyone, uh, we are doing the city sensor challenge. Uh, our team name is D Smoke. Uh, I'm Halit, this is Pradeep, Yu Chen, uh, Andreas and Johan. And uh, yeah. Could you, could you be the team come over to this side? Right. Yeah. Uh, great. Yes, yeah. Then start now. Wait. <laughs> Wait. Uh, so we are, we are uh, doing the city sensor challenge and the reason that we are doing this challenge is because uh, there are a lot of sensors in the city and they are, but they are usually independent from each other so we wanted to one we wondered what if what would happen if we brought bring them together and create a more intelligent city and also our other aim was to create a better tool for city offici officer officers to uh, more uh, to organize the city more effectively and have an effective use of the sensors and um, our name is D smoke uh, kind of uh, think about thinking about it as lifting the smoke uh, from the city while using the efficient sensor data and uh, my teammates will give a demonstration okay guys uh, I would be uh, demoing the tool what we designed for this so how can this tool be used by the city officials to uh, solve the problems. Let's say I want to prob solve the problem of air pollution. So I go there, I enter this. So I get this graph which explains uh, from the city of Singapore and there can be many solutions from other cities which are already doing this because there are many smart cities already. So I have this air pollution as a problem and I'm using this infrastructure, it's a bus, and I will be employing these sensors, air quality. So I can solve one problem, but how can this solve what more problems associated with it. So when there is a lot of air pollution, you can link it to, there are more traffic, so you can use it to reduce the traffic jams, and it also leads to noise pollution, so you can also reduce this. So this information can be used by the traffic department so that they can control the traffic flow in the areas. But basically, these sensors are employed by some other department or the environment department. So this can also be, I can use a different infrastructure here. So Let's say I'm in a city like America where there are no public transport, so I want to employ them in buildings, so I shouldn't do this. So I, I get a different solution, and I can evalu evaluate them. So these are different descriptions of the solutions I have, and I can evaluate which one is better for me, which suits for my city. So this is a tool, and this the prototype one more we developed, so which shows the interactions between the problems, infrastructure, and the sensors. So if I let's say if I click here, it shows how the broken things in the city can be reported by the crowd using the mobile app. So this is one of the solutions. So, and there are more solutions which are done in different cities, and this can act as a database to everything. And my friend will continue further. With the system, we can have a framework for solving city sensors, so sustainable challenges, and it's a process tools for the city officials. And it's also evolving framework, including an ever-growing collection of global data. And with everyone's contribution, we can make the Paris better. <laughs> yeah. 
And they, we also have the benefits to our all our users. The, it's a multi multiplier effect, and it's problem oriented. It's a way to structure the sensor eco ecosystem and open and free innovation for the platform. Like today, I think I want to display a very good vision, so we can install this and to share with the whole world. Yeah. <laughs> so we can input all the solutions we had from different teams into our system, and we can solu uh, we can take which suits best for the Stockholm city. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you have a mic? Here? How is it going? <laughs> Are you? Yeah. Yeah, maybe I can say something about the event here uh, before we have the team going. So those of you who are, are watching there or have been visiting here, we started yesterday uh, at uh, 1.30 here. We have some introductions. And then from 3 o'clock, uh, the team has been putting 24 hours of work into this project. And now they're really... Uh, stress to, to make the best of these three minutes. But I can tell that do those of you who who uh, wonder if this is the only thing, because the jury is also going around the teams and talk to them as well. So they are more connected to the project than maybe it should seem here. But uh, I think it's amazing that all these different kind of things have been done in such a way. How's it going? Okay, Paros, is you? Are you ready? <laughs> Maybe I could ask the the jury, Matthias. How how do you think? It's going. I think it's amazing and it's really, I have those uh, 10 different uh, criteria that I summarize and uh, subtract a bit from and it's really close right now between all the participants. All the participants yeah. is in the same level. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> what do you say, Jenny, about the solutions so far? I think, I think we've seen some really creative solutions up here and it's been really interesting to listen. It's going to be a hard uh, decision for, for the jury. Yeah, and if you wonder, uh, we had we do this. Uh, we had four different challenges, as, and this is a challenge that well, most team have done uh, solutions for. So it be less uh, uh, team uh, in the coming challenges. Are you going? No. Okay. I go forward with the jury. Then, Thomas, what do you say? Is there any interesting thing for the city here? I'm, uh, I'm in awe of all the creativity that's been going on uh, all through the night. So yeah. it's going to be very interesting. I'm, we're already having our discussions in the jury. Yeah, you have. <laughs> do you want to say something? Yeah, at least the one or two projects would be very interesting for Tabby Municipality. Yeah, I'd say. very nice. Is either side working here? Perfect. <laughs> okay. Then you talk a little bit about your team. You can stand here, maybe. And if you are more people to talk, you have to pass the mic. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, can we get the slide up? So this is a familiar sight for many of you. Uh, when you see the news, uh, people walking in uh, Beijing uh, uh, wearing face masks uh, through clouds of smog. And uh, uh, this will be a growing problem as uh, up to 66% uh, 
of the world population is expected to live in cities by 2050. And it's not only a problem in Asia or Latin America, it's also a problem in Sweden on a lesser scale. Um, and people are wearing uh, these face masks because uh, uh, of particles, uh, small particles that uh, get lodged in the lungs and cause a number of different diseases, um, such as uh, shortening uh, the average lifespan by nine months, according to a study for the European Union. Um, and uh, our suggestion for this is uh, so that to let citizens monitor how much uh, uh, particle levels they're exposed to during their da daily commutes. Uh, we call our idea air care, which is a portable clip that you attach to your uh, clothes. And when you go to work or back from work, uh, it logs uh, uh, the information, how uh, many particles you've encountered on the way, and also combines these from many different people uh, to build a general map of the city so that uh, policymakers, uh, uh, politicians, and also city planners can decide how to uh, redirect traffic uh, to reduce uh, um, uh, effects of uh, high uh, particle levels. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Um, so how does it work? We have uh, a small unit uh, that connects via Bluetooth uh, to a phone, um, and the phone combines uh, your uh, particle level at any moment, and uh, combines it with GPS data, uh, and uploads it to our cloud service, which creates a map. Okay, this is just a picture we took off the internet, but we actually have a map working. Mm -hmm. So this is, if you walk around the block here, uh, around this building, uh, you'll get these data points. Uh, and uh, we have uh, built hardware that's uh, working right now. Uh, yeah, so it uh, uses a Bluetooth transceiver and uh, uploads uh, the information to a map service. Yeah, thank you. So can I ask, just ask you, uh, your team? Sure. Hello? Hello. Is someone wants to? <laughs> we are preparing the other ones. Do you, how can someone tell me about how how the work has been done? In those these twenty four hours. These twenty four hours. <laughs> um, a lot of sitting and uh, working and fiddling with electronics uh, on my part. Uh, a lot of. Uh, yeah, we build a software, basically we build the API, we want to make the data open, so it is open API uploaded to Google App Engine right now, and it's a real-time communication. So all these parts are connected together and actually works. So we started to work five minutes before three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <so laughs> you shouldn't tell that, this <laughs> it seemed to work very fine. <laughs> yeah. Have you had any sleep this night? I had, <laughs> some other people didn't. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, now, are we ready to go? Oh, perfect. I don't have to s swim in a deep lake anymore. Okay, yeah. Hello, everyone. Sorry. Sorry for keeping you waiting. Um, my name is Navneet, and my team is here. Sugand, Ashtosh, Yevin, and uh, Jing. And we all are from KTH. So when we started working on the... When we started working on the sensor networks project, uh, the first thing which came to our mind is how uh, we're gonna use the existing resources to provide something new. We didn't actually think about uh, what sensors do we have to put or you know what extra things we have to add. We wanted to know what we can actually use which is already existing. So the first team already mentioned that the Stockholm has a huge database of all the uh, information about uh, transportation, about parking and everything. So we try to focus ourselves on the parking. Transportation is a big issue for the coming generation. And I think in the cities, it's a big thing to, it's a very uh, big uh, challenge for people who own car to get a right parking spot at the right time. So our solution is basically uh, to provide uh, real-time data about the parking situation in a city. So 
uh, we have developed a simple interface, which we're going to show you how it's going to work. So, well, the person will put up uh, his own dest his own origin and uh, where he wants to go, and click on the search button. As simple as that, and he will be uh, given these options where he will have the eco-friendly option where he doesn't have to drive too much so that the fuel is fuel consumption is low, and then he'll have fastest, least costly, and comfortable. Comfort means that you want to drive all the way in your car. So then we'll provide you with a parking space which is closest to your destination. So when he uh, clicks on the eco-friendly option, he'll be given a par given a parking space which is empty right outside the city, where the parking is empty and he doesn't have to wait for a parking spot or he doesn't have to go into a traffic filled area. So the fuel consumption is low, the pollution is low. So this way we'll show the map to the user and uh, we'll show every point where that user has to make changes in the, uh, in the transition. So um, <clears throat> I guess uh, the data which we require is already available except the data which uh, for the real time parking. So that for that we have to use some sensors. The sensors have to be put either in the form of a camera which can be kept at the parking stations on uh, street lamps or in the private parking areas. And the cameras can be used, uh, like the video from the camera can be uh, video processed to uh, give us the information about the empty parking spaces. Or we can use uh, the newly formed radar sensors which are made by Siemens. They are already uh, testing it. They are expensive right now, but the technology is not that expensive, so they're gonna be cheaper. Um, now, uh, we want to provide a solution where it's not just about uh, giving you the option of uh, empty parking, but it can also provide you uh, with a solution where you don't have to wait too long in the traffic as well. So both uh, the public transport as well as the private transport will be optimized in a way that uh, both of them won't be won't get crowded. So the streets won't be crowded, as well as the public transports, the buses, the trains would not be crowded. So the information about the okay. So in the in the end, I want to say that it will give you it will give consumers a hassle-free solution where they don't have to. Uh, they can use their own private trans transport, but they can also use the public transport, and both will be optimized to reduce the uh, total pollution in the city. Thank you so much. Okay. So did you did you have uh, have a demo that doesn't didn't work or? So yeah, have, but uh, 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 Google Map application, yeah. which in which we show that how uh, user can select and search. Uh, the uh, we have a Google we made a Google Map application where user can search. Uh, uh, his uh, origin, he can put his origin and destination, and we will uh, give him a parking space right out the, outside the city uh, where he can get empty parking spots. But of course, we don't have the sensor data right now, so we cannot uh, give the real time yeah. estimates. And I think the URI has seen that uh, it's at your place, or they can look at it after yes, this. Yes. Okay, do you have any more uh, sensors are showing up? No? Then I su suggest that uh, the Stockholm Digital Care teams uh, sign up uh, on each side here. And uh, uh, I could say something about Stockholm Digital Care. It's an uh, organization uh, that are several uh, municipalities around Stockholm that has gone together and uh, they like to um, <laughs> yeah now it's very crowded here again so uh, how many teams are going for the Stockholm Digital Care we have done one there one there and one there yeah okay two there yeah good so line up uh, on the side here I think so Stockholm Digital Care uh, we have uh, some uh, People from the Stockholm Digital Care, do you want to say something about the organization or? <laughs> Emma is coming here. Hello everyone, my name is Emma Eng and I'm the project manager of Stockholm Digital Care. 
It's a five-year collaborative project between the municipalities and uh, Landstinget in Stockholm, where we want to improve the independence and well-being of the elderly through the use of digital solutions. So we want help in how we can improve the situation for the elderly without increasing costs or emissions for the city. Yeah, thank you very much. And you kind of want to look for new solutions and new companies that's looking at this and uh, maybe you can help them on the way to find municipalities or uh, other organizations that are interested in, in elderly care. And Yes, our goal is to increase the actually the growth of companies in this area in Stockholm. So we want to create new companies, stimulate new ideas, and also to make people aware of the fact that this is a growing business. There are elderly people with needs, and the new generation of elderly people will have more money, and they will not perhaps be satisfied with what's offered today. Thank you very much. Okay, where do we start? Over there? Get over here. Yes, hello. We are also a part of Team Happy Hippos. And we are here to present our conceptualized solution to the digital care challenge that was set for us. Um, my name is Yannika, and this is Caroline. So uh, as many of us know, Sweden and Many, yeah, let's start the slideshow. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right. Um, Sweden and many other first world countries are faced with a new demographic challenge, that being the aging population, um, which poses new, new challenges. Um, the elderly often use home care services such as um, meal services and are faced with challenges such as illness and disability um, that prevent them from being able to cook food themselves. So, oh, sorry, too fast. So home meal services are in high demand right now. And they're, most of them are institutionalized and they're slow and pretty impersonal at times. And uh, we want to change that. So, and we want to add a digital layer and taking home care into the digital transformation era. And uh, our digital solution will focus on um, the future challenges within transportation and how you can increase the meal experience. Um, yes, and this is our solution. It's called Nom Nom. Pretty much looks like Airbnb. Uh, you put in the postal code. We want to make it really like personal and also flexible and simple. So you put in your postal code, the date that you want your meal, the time, and then you go search. And then you go into this side, where you can put in, you can narrow down your search and choose the meal preference and what price range. And you'll see within the area, the people that are willing to cook the food and deliver it to your house. You can also rate the people, obviously. And this will give the, the elderly a more personal experience. So what we're seeing now is this shift from private consumption to uh, a sharing economy services. And um, services such as Airbnb and Uber embody that movement that we see. And we feel like our digital uh, design addresses environmental issues as well as promotes sustainability. It also creates value for the users of the service. Um, and most importantly, it's not only a functional meal service, it promotes community spirit. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for a nice presentation. And here are HCI Uppsala University. Can you tell us something more about yeah. the team? Okay, uh, yeah, we are Julia, Mike, Adib, and me, Laura, and we also looked at the digital care challenge for how to make the meal experience better. And yeah, um, our solution that we developed is called Caring Neighbors, so we also went with that community idea. And yeah, I'm going to explain it to you in a scenario in the next uh, 
three minutes, and yeah, that's that. So I would like to introduce you to uh, Ola. She lives in Stockholm. She's 87 years old, and uh, she gets her food from uh, a restaurant in Stockholm. It's delivered twice a week to her, and uh, yeah, it's com coming by car, and the car goes to several destinations. Ola would like to have uh, more fresh food, and she would like to cho have more choice instead of having twice a week. And so, yeah, we were looking into that challenge. So, the, the fresh food and the more driving would obviously increase the CO2. So, we were looking at how can we make that a bit better. <laughs> so, what if we improve that, and if we use the existing environment that we have in our communities and in our neighborhoods to make that experience and to make that delivery of food better? We could use, for example, uh, public areas like kindergarten, schools, or uh, homes where elderly people already live as some kind of hub where we could store the food and then deliver it. So instead of one person being delivered, we could deliver it to one big place and then share it from there to the individual persons. So how that can look like. So you bring it from the restaurant to the school or the kindergarten, and then you share it to the individual people. The current... <laughs> okay. Go on. <laughs> So how is that going to work in real life? <laughs> um, so now let's meet Susan and Ali. Um, they also live in uh, Ola's neighborhood. And every day um, they are going to the kindergarten together. So how can we match that? Uh, one day, small Ellie brings a small letter home that introduces the system that we just say uh, to her mother. And the mother goes to the website or to the app and she finds that in her neighborhood several older people are living that currently need food delivery s on several days. So she founds Ola and then she connects to Ola personally and they together develop a plan how they can help each other and how they can work together on that. So they plan a schedule. So what the restaurant is doing in our case, they put something like a QR code on their food boxes and in this food box is then delivered to the kindergarten and there it's checked in and then you have like you can follow where the food currently is. Then when Ellie is picked up from the kindergarten the mother also takes the food packages with her and she also checks out the food there so you always know where the food is and you have that line of trust that's always needed. <laughs> but we also want yeah so then she brings the food package to Ola and her home. Um, but also it's possible that Ola herself walks to the kindergarten and pu puts, uh, picks up the food package herself. So she can, if she wants to take a walk, she can also go there. So what if a Susan cannot pick up the, pick the package herself? So what's the emergency case? Our application provides uh, two different alternative emergency contacts that are also living in the neighborhood. So we have like a the idea is of a community network of neighbors that have it help each other. And you not only have your first personal contact, but you also have several that will be in line if your first contact cannot help anymore. So the good thing about our solution is that the crisis driving is decreased because the restaurant only needs to go to one place. And the way from the kindergarten to the home is done anyway. So we have less CO2. And we have a controlled delivery because with the QR code, the person always knows where the food currently is. And we have more flexibility with the food choice. So Ola can choose when she wants to have what food in a more flexible way. And the most important part, it's more social integration. So Ola has direct connection to her neighborhood. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you for that. OK, are you ready on this side? There, there, down. Okay, yeah. could you take the mic? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, happy you to be can, here. You can be here, maybe. So, the if the team could come up a little here. So, uh, our team is uh, uh, Bites by Bike, and this is uh, Young. We have Sakshiam, we have Devrat, and we have Daniel. My name is Mats. Let's go. So uh, our uh, concept is called Bites by Bike. And so we, the challenge is Stockholm Digital Care, Transportation and Food Challenge. So can we reduce driving in the delivery of food to the elderly? That is our challenge. 
so uh, the current situation is that the caregivers and nurses use cars to access the homes of elderly under the municipal care. And meals are also delivered from the factory to home in cars once a week. So what do we do about this? So the current situation is like this. It's a van carrying the food and uh, emits uh, carbon dioxide. And our proposal is that we go by bike uh, from the food delivery to the elderly. So we take away the car, take away the CO2. Uh, so this, I'm not going to read all of this, but uh, because we're going to show a short movie soon. So it's all about reducing emissions and using bikes uh, to take the food out to the elderly. And uh, with this situation also, we create jobs for uh, young uh, people, like the, the ones that deliver mail. This is a similar type of job. Uh, and there is an app with this uh, concept. So uh, the caretaker, he can log in, gets his or her list of tasks, uh, bike route, and then the work schedule. And so thank you very much. And I would like to show the movie, please. The current situation is that cars have to travel from the food factory to each of the individual homes of the elderly people. This has a huge impact on the environment, especially considering the CO2 emissions per unit kilometer of each journey, and this is undesirable. Our solution introduces a distribution center from where the cars are replaced by cargo bikes. The bike riders have a mobile app in which they can see their scheduled deliveries for the day and they can also optimize their routes so that they travel the shortest distance between each home of the elderly people. This would definitely reduce the CO2 emissions, but additionally it would also provide employment to youths. In the app, the riders also tick off each completed delivery before heading back to the distribution center. Thank you very much. Thank you for that nice movie. And uh, we have another team on this side. Could you please say your team name and uh, maybe a little bit about what you have done? Uh, yeah. So uh, we are a Common Care. Um, so our Shh. team members um, are uh, Avout, David, uh, Ulrika, Kaur, and myself, Jana. Um, and we have covered the Stockholm Digital Care um, Challenge. Uh, so basically what we've been doing is a gamification of an intergenerational exchange uh, system. So it's basically working like a game. Um, can you tr take the next one? Uh, yeah, that's us. You've already heard that. Um, so um, what Common Care does is it engages communities into caring for their own senior citizens again. Uh, which is something that has been decreasing over time, and that's a huge problem. So it's a web application um, which provides users with a platform for either requesting or offering free services. And these services will be offered to elderly uh, people. And there will be uh, things such as uh, bringing home some groceries from the store when you already go shopping, uh, walking the dog if the person has arthritis, um, just spending some time, um, stuff like that. It will also be a platform for creating social gatherings, so people can offer to either cook a meal and deliver it, or cook a meal and offer to share it at their own uh, house. Um, and most importantly, it will be a game promoting the intergenerational exchange. Um, so you will have, um, oh, stay back. Um, so you will have uh, a point system within the uh, web application. Uh, you can earn uh, rewards, uh, awards, you know, trophies, um, but there will also be external awards from uh, companies that we work with. So it could be um, supermarkets, local supermarkets that we cooperate with. And so um, if you buy something for your neighbor, the next time you're going to get some small voucher price off. Um, restaurants, if you offer to cook a meal for another person several times, you get a voucher for a meal in a restaurant yourself. Um, the most uh, social um, 
helpers in the community, get an honorable mention in the local newspaper, stuff like that, uh, just to have external reward systems. Um, so how does it solve our problem? First of all, you get uh, healthier, fresher food. Uh, you don't have a once a week delivery. You can actually get it on a daily basis from farmers, supermarkets, restaurants, uh, whatnot. Uh, you get social integration because people uh, will meet up. They will meet up for food. They will meet up in exchange for small services. They will get talking. Um, so you get the entire social component back in. And finally, you will reduce emissions. Uh, you need fewer food deliveries. Uh, every delivery needs to transport less. Uh, perishables don't need to be transported on a short-term basis. Um, and social workers don't need to stop by all the time to do small uh, household chores. How do we motivate people to participate? Uh, well, for the senior citizens, it is a obvious rewarding system. Uh, for the younger generations, in the first stage, you have motivation to join through the external reward system. You actually get some value for it. Um, in the middle um, term, uh, you get the competitiveness. It's a game. You compete against your neighbors. You get uh, local rankings. You want to be better than the others, you know? Um, and in the third stage, everyone benefits. So why not keep it up? So we've actually programmed this entire thing into a uh, prototype that is already working. Um, so if you could open that. Um, the link is going to be up so everyone can try around. You can be either a user requesting help or a user offering help. You can make accounts. Um, maybe we actually get it to open. Um, you can uh, choose the kind of challenges that you want to complete. There is a point system where you get penalties for accepting but not completing, etc. Um, and parts of it are already coded into an actual working uh, yeah, program, web app. Uh, it's just not as pretty yet. So um, Is it if you to want get to try it up around, or? use this one. <laughs> Okay. You were able to show the show the things you wanted, or no? Okay. Is it something interactions in it, or oh yeah. yeah? Ten seconds. Can you? <laughs> So as a senior citizen, you could uh, probably see, uh, you could uh, request some some kind of services like uh, shopping, and uh, then you could add, I don't know, something like that. Uh, and so people uh, would, would be able to uh, accept this service uh, later, later on. And this is uh, more or less what we have around here uh, as well, but it's uh, actually, well, this uh, this really not, not so good looking, but uh, yeah, we also got some some of the stuff uh, working as well. You programmed the, a lot behind a prototype as well. Yeah, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> yep, if you stand here, do you want to move? Good afternoon, everyone. We are Drive Care, and I'm Giovanna. This is Mohit, Mikel, and Burak. And we are going to introduce you Drive Care, which is a, a concept and also an application for the elderly care in uh, Stockholm. So basically, what is the problem? Uh, nowadays, we have 20% of the to top population uh, above 65. And the projection is that this number will uh, rise or keep the same. And nowadays we have uh, 18,000 care caretakers having to drive every day to give care of the elderly people. And they drive 75,000 kilometers and around 45,000 liters of fuel are spent every, every day. So uh, our solution is not only useful for the caretakers that have to drive every day, but also other people that depend on cars to uh, deliver services to the elderly. And taking the constraints that uh, the caretakers should not have their quality of work compromised and uh, that the car might be needed, we thought about a way to optimize the usage of the car by sharing rights between the caretakers. 
So I'll try to explain. Like right now, what is happening in the Stockholm thing is that uh, you have a central place, and the red dot represents the elderly people home where the caretaker has to go and give the service. So right now, each caretaker goes individually to each and every area, provides the care, and comes back. So the problem, one of the key problem that was mentioned that these distances are usually less than five kilometers. So every time you switch on your car, the, you heat up the engine, you waste a lot of petrol. Instead of this, why not optimize a way that instead of having an individual car, why not have a network of cars and then you can share the ride. Now there are many problems that maybe the last one, this one's working. Okay, uh, the last one, by the time it comes, it will be like 20 minutes late or 30 minutes late, and there would be a quality of lack in quality. So what we propose is kind of a network of cars in the municipality. You have allotted drivers, and then it's like Uber. The caretakers can request it. They don't have to drive themselves. They, When they're done with the service, they just request they're done, and the nearest taxi will come and pick it up. So by this, we did some calculations. Uh, by sharing that thing, we reduced the 35% thing of uh, switching on the engine and wasting the fuel. And uh, the, as they're sharing the rides, so one third driving distance of going and coming back is reduced. And approximately 55% cost in fuel will be reduced. This is the interface of the app for the driver. So as you can see, he has like the next pickup, Eric Johnson. He has the pickup location, he has the drop-in location, estimated time, and the next trip he has to do. Uh, so for him, it doesn't matter like from uh, like, he has to just know the location of the caretakers for pickup and drop. Uh, the key things the algorithm will take care of is like the waiting time for caretakers should not be more than five minutes. It's like 20 minutes or 30 minutes, then this system is a waste. Uh, and if it's sharing a ride, then it shouldn't be that the route is such that the second caretaker is wasting a lot of time just waiting for the cab to come. And maybe in the future, why not have driverless autonomous car that can make this process even more easier? Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's give this there. And how many more teams do we have for digital care? Just one more team, okay. Uh, then uh, the the teams that are going for the NACA uh, green walls and roofs could uh, add up uh, all in front. Okay, are you ready to go? Yeah, d definitely. <laughs> Hello. But present the team a little bit. Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, we are Team KDH or Connected Care Community Service Anything. So for us, the name didn't actually matter. But um, I'm Yash, um, Agniv, Penelope, Shiara, and Nick. We are part of this futuristic crazy idea that we thought. And um, can we yeah, begin? Yeah, you can start. Thanks. Great. Um, before coming to an idea, I just want you all to have a look at our 10 second clip. Uh, please. Okay, so uh, connected care, whatever. Uh, the important thing to notice in that clip was people are so engrossed in the technology, but we still care for people. That action of saving someone's life in a matter of split second means a lot. Not just for once, but you know, every person out there. It might be your friend, it might be your relative, anyone. We have done that kind of act at least once in our lifetime. So the idea is, Actually, we all here are focusing on the word communities. Every community has some you know, advantages, disadvantages, and it exists. So we know that you, know, you can build on it. Community builds with people, and of course we have the infrastructure right now. We have the elite technology of IoT sensors, devices, which can kind of have control, track, monitor, and give out information to healthcare centers, hospitals, and so on. What we decide to do is like get this community into a bigger level. Uh, can you go slide back? 
So basically, the box that you can see, it's again like the Telia healthcare box. It exists, it has all the remote sensors which can detect, give out information to your uh, neighbors if it's installed, and also healthcare services. Uh, why not use it on everyday appliances, maybe for TV? You could interface it because then the elderly people, they won't have to learn or deal with new technology. Okay, next. Uh, well Tower is an example that creates assistive living spaces. Next. And again, Telia Healthcare. Next. Uh, some kind of new senses. Next. Right. So coming on to the main topic, we, ho we all have lots of this, but fresh food delivery and transportation. Those were the really key challenges. So what we provide is, next, this. Why not use the existing services of Amazon's prime delivery or so on to provide an efficient way, a really speed way to deliver food and also reduce carbon emissions by using drones. Um, just on the inside, in Nepal earthquake, there were like at least 7,500 people killed. And uh, an Indian company called as Quid Ditch, they kind of deployed drones not only for you know, uh, seeing where people are or you know, uh, the lands and so on, but they also deployed medicines and food services. So until it didn't become any emergency, none of them actually thought that you could use it. So since Sweden is actually an innovative country, I think in, in the next five to 10 years, this can be absolutely possible. And um, especially when um, the regulations on drones in Sweden is not like US where it's banned. So um, yeah, I think, I think this is all the, uh, the drone care delivery service could do. Thank you. Thank you very much. I can take that. Both that. I, I will have a short thing. <laughs> I, I just want you to prepare. It's good. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we have a jury for the digital care as well. We have a little bit short of time, but maybe it can rise. I think you are in the in the back there. You see that Emma and her colleagues and uh, from KTAS, KTH as well. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, so, uh, Magnus uh, Rotman, would you would like to say a few words about the challenge for the Nakia Green Walls and Roof? I mean, most of you probably heard me yesterday. Is this thing on? Yes. My voice carries anyway. So, again, I want to rehash what I already said, but we're looking at some kind of ingenious kind of new ways of looking at into to the, the problem we do have or the challenges we face with, with oncoming more rainfall, but also possibly some more heat waves in the summertime. And again, what we want to see if that, can we use the buildings, actually the buildings get some greenery somehow on the surface or mixed in, in the structure with or without IT technology. But, but the point is you know, to make it a combination among multifunctionality with, with the green space intertwined somehow in, in, the, in the building structure or actually, the, well, the whole area. In this case, it was a specific site here close to, to so the mound downtown, uh, just given an example. But we're pretty open-minded about it, so we're thrilled to see what you guys have in store. Yeah, thanks. And maybe the jury for the NACA challenge can rise as well. Thank you very much. So, yep, so who wants to begin? You were keen on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ready to go. Here you are. All right, we got our three minutes. So, you gotta warm up. No, we're good, we're good, professional. Um, this is my team. Testing, testing, all right. Okay, so we are Green Plus Plus, and uh, I'm Isabel. This is Leo, Maxime, Hannah, and Valeria. So, that's us, and that's not us. It's coming. Perfect. All right, so we are working on integrated city benefits. When we heard about this challenge, we were like, okay, first thing we got to break down this wall between the natural environment and the built environment. It's the integrated environment. We all live on it. We all depend on it. So let's make that visible. Um, and why do we want to do that? Well, actually, there's some recent studies that have come out that say that people perform better when they are exposed to nature, and even if you just look at it. So. How are we going to do that? Uh, one quick note here. There's also some technical things that are good about this. So we get stormwater management, but uh, we also have improved insulation. 
And there are social benefits of having these communal spaces, as well as educational values about our environment and ecosystems, and the ecological benefits of having a place for nature in the city. So, concept one, rain chains for change. So you might have seen a rain chain before on the far side there. Um, it's an alternative to a gutter. And they can be flower forms, or you can have them in more modern and angular varieties. Um, this is just a sculpture, but imagine that as a rain chain. So then imagine that on a building. So if you make it bigger and you put it down the entire building, and this could be multiplied out over the sides of the building, um, this would, instead of the building acting as a wall, the rain comes in whoosh, and then whoosh, down to the uh, road. It doesn't do that anymore. Instead, it goes in our rain chains. And our rain chains would have media in them to slow the flow. And if it has uh, drain holes on the bottom, you could put plants in. And if it does not have drain holes on the bottom, we can have this nice waterfall effect. Then you would just have uh, rocks or other media. And uh, you would have this wall where you would have something interesting, but why not the roof as well? So uh, up here we have a, a butterfly roof that is also a greenhouse. Um, and when the water comes in, it then comes down these kind of waterfall uh, tubes into a pond, which is a feature but it also is a storage mechanism for all of our water up there. And then you have a year-round green space because you do not have the best growing climate up here in Sweden. So uh, these are just alternative versions of this, a little bit larger type of uh, drainage system. Here you do have uh, greenhouses, but you also kind of have this like inner river concept on the roof. Um, so very, very exciting. Uh, and here, here, this is an even cooler thing to do with your uh, greenhouse up here. This is actually growing food. Why not add some more services? Make this a real ecosystem in your building. Uh, and here we have an aquaponic system uh, where we are actually growing fish and food. So that's great. And then we can start recycling some gray water and really making our, our building work. And that's, that's what we like to see. So. Um, Moving right along, uh, you can always fill in the spaces in between all of these things with uh, traditional green walls. So it's not an either or, it's a plus plus. And um, you can also have roofs uh, that are connected to each other. And uh, they can have things like uh, blooming flowers that uh, help protect the roof if uh, it's too hot outside. And uh, finally, our very quick digital connection, uh, it's weather dependent. So if the rain's going to come, uh, then it drains the system so that you have a new place for new rain. And uh, you can use GIS to determine where you should put these by hotspot identification. So I believe time's up. Oh, that's our drainage system. That's how it's working. Thank you. Thank you for a fast presentation. OK, are you ready to go? Thanks. Maybe you can stand here and you're talking the mic. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Isabella. And this is my two teammates, Robert and Anton. And we're from the Swedish School of Planning. And we're going to present our solution for the green walls. Okay, so green walls are predicted to be a key in the solution of more sustainable city. Some benefits are reduced peak flows, reduced runoff volume, and handling of heat waves. Here are some of the world's biggest or ambi most ambitious uh, projects of uh, green walls in the world. Yes, and uh, here we have one building which is built in uh, Helsingborg in uh, Skåne, which has a very big price tag, which is a quite a big problem, because this is one of the very few buildings we have here in Sweden. And the problem is here today that many people in the public think that these buildings are too expensive. So our solution here is to try to communicate with the people, try to make an understanding for why are there good benefits for building this kind of green buildings. Because today, if we can't get the public with us, then there is 
a very hard way to get the solution to go forward. And also seizing the opportunity here with, uh, with the smart cities and tech people, we kind of took a tech approach to this thing and realized that we have some pretty new tools with the social medias and IoT services that we can use to harness the, the uh, people's opinions. So we can use Facebook to target uh, ads to people that are actually in and reading on blog posts about, uh, about these kind of things. And also we can use Kickstarter campaigns to then fuel that campaign a bit further. And today with the Internet of Things, we have a really big opportunity to track everything we're doing with these green walls and green facade and green roofs. So in order us, for us to be able to create this combustion or like create an explosion of green walls, which we all love, and you can see the, the previous presenters, how they show us such a great concept. We should have more of these. We just need people to understand that we need these walls. And to be able to build here in Sweden today, we need to have the opinion of the people behind us which is really important and we would like to say that it's been a great time for us to be here with tech people and integrating that into our urban development and it's been a really cool take to have planners thinking as tech because that is the future we're not going to be able to run stuff in a in a dumb way when we have smartphones and smart medias and social medias. So we should really take our time and learn more about this at our, from our side as planners. And our names, as, as we said earlier, Robert, Valin, Anton Lilligren, and Isabella Berg. And uh, yeah, thanks again for such a great time. We hope you all enjoyed it as much as we did. Thank you very much. You kind of did the final speech from, from me already, so I don't have to do that. Be because that's really what it's all about, uh, connecting people. And I really, really like the architect views on, on technology that we have get this big spectrum of behavior. Yes, next team. Right. Um, hi, everyone. You talk in the mic. And you maybe stay here, stand here. Mm -hmm. It's coming, coming there. All right. Hi everyone, I'm Leander and this is my teammate Alita and we represent Team Frailejon. We're non-Spanish speakers by the way, but this is a Spanish word. <laughs> yeah, we're focusing on the Naka Green Walls and Roofs Challenge and um, we don't have a working prototype, but... Oh, I will, thank you. Yeah, as I said, we don't have a working prototype, but we have some concepts and some directions that this challenge can go to. And I think everyone knows the potential for green roofs and green walls. Uh, no need to spend a lot of um, time on this. We, if you read the challenge, you read everything about the potential. But I'm gonna present to you our three-point solution, which is based on uh, choosing the right plant for these um, situations. Um, harvesting the, the potential of uh, rainwater and using ICT to uh, measure data and see real time what is going on related to these systems. And lastly, some design concepts. The first one, basically the plant, the Frailejon, is a plant this, which is native to Colombia, Venezuela, and Ecuador. It's heavily important in the ecosystem of where you can find it because it, um, it is like a natural sponge which uh, drains water from the, from the clouds, from rain, from everything. So it's, it's, it's magic. <laughs> and yeah, basically it, it absorbs water and it releases water through its trunk, through its roots, f helping in this way to uh, create other elements in the system such as rivers. Um, secondly, we have the connection part of it. Um, we, we saw some cool representation about what could be done in terms of sensors. We chose uh, the, the Arduino Smart Citizen Kit, which is something already in the market now for five or six years. It costed $150 three years ago. Now you have really cool things that are cost less, 
more uh, accurate and reliable data. But what they do, they can tell you real time um, things about uh, carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, um, humidity, w um, light, noise pollution, and a lot of things. So it's super cheap, super nice, and you can place it on the, on the system itself, near the plants. And basically, it has also wireless charger, so it's super nice. Um, in terms of more about the connectivity, we basically think that you can harvest water. And with the, with the right plan, with the right connections, you can build uh, a system which not only you have the water that goes through the runoff, but uh, you minimize that effect through actually enabling the, the residents of a building to, to consume that water. But obviously, there needs to be filtering and, and uh, uh, a whole system that would support that, that, uh, that logic. And lastly, about design. This is also in, in relation to not reinventing the wheel. There's people who are actually thinking about how to um, make design work also for uh, tilted roofs, but also in lateral uh, designs where you could actually build these things. And yeah, this was our presentation. Thank you. Thank you very Thank you very much. We're kind of closing in, but we have a last challenge. Uh, Schutzgruppen. How many teams are doing Schutzgruppen right now? One team. Yeah. Two. Two teams. There? Okay. <laughs> and then I think we have one team left from the sensors that's going to be last here. Is it okay? Oh, have you loaded that? Peros? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, sure. Then uh, we take... Uh, well, Penilla is here. Can you take something about Kutsgruppen? Maybe all of you knew what it is. Yes. Kutsgruppen uh, is a non-profit uh, ride-sharing movement uh, with uh, 60,000 participants uh, here in Sweden right now. And uh, our challenge is to create a mobile client for our services that are currently only a web app and uh, uh, social media groups and so on. So that's yeah, good. thank you very much. I'm glad to have you here. Okay. Is you ready on this side? Yeah. Who wants who wants the mic? <laughs> so you stand well, here. Uh, and you tell a little bit about the team. Yeah, of course. Uh, hello, everyone. And our teams are all Chinese ladies here, beautiful ladies. And our team name is Team Pack Apps, as you can see. Obviously, if you do the math quickly. And uh, our challenge is the screws grouping things in Swedish. Yeah, let's start. Uh, well, our, our challenge is to design a prototype for our mobile client app for the ride sharing with groups grouping and other forms of green travel. And the, our contribution can be divided into three parts, namely the potential characteristics, an app prototype and the matching algorithm. And firstly, the potential characteristics are security. Of course, it's very important because we're strangers and we have to take a ride from a driver, so we have to know whether it's safe to do that thing. And our uh, suggestion is to log in via the identification things and both from the drivers and the schools grouping. And th in this way, we can just know each other before we just take the ride. And secondly, it is have to be self-contained since uh, currently it is just from the Facebook groups or things like that to make the communication. But we want all the things in one portal, just in the app, app things. And the third one is the minimalism. It's just something like the Google homepage that we have a lot of functions, but we only need one very simple portal for people to use. Okay, and this is our prototype. And firstly, from left to right, we can see this is the profile homepage for, for a driver. And you can see his total miles and total so, uh, solving things. And the rate, rate is just from the client. And also, you can see the trip you have already driven and the managed, manage your trip and messages, things like that. And the second one is just some search a uh, search homepage from the cast uh, not customer. It's just from the free riders, and you can just search from 
from one place to another and just see whether there are drivers who can take his ride. And the third one is just the details of the driver in, from the click here to him. And you can see that how many, ca uh, how many free riders are already here and how his rate and the confiden uh, confidentially, things like that. And switch. And finally, when you just take the ride, you can just give the rate and leave some comments to the driver and just to show gratitude, things like that. And finally, we can just see the miles are saved and the CO2 are saved too in our app in the end. And this is some pseudocode we designed for the Scripps Grouping app because we don't have to see the detail. We can just see some keywords here. We firstly we have to match the destination to see whether the group grouping and the driver are on the same target, and then we just retrieve all the possible routes from the Google Map. And for each route, we have to match the time and match the route in some in some way. And then if it is a match, we just return it to our group grouping. And if not, we just leave it alone. And uh, switch. Okay, and our slogan is to be greener and to be connected with people all around. And yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, who is who is going up now? Are you? Yes. Soft house? Yeah. Here you are the mic. You can start telling a bit about your project and what you're doing. Yeah. So uh, we are Team Soft House. Uh, because we're fr all from the company Softhouse. Um, and uh, it's me, uh, Stellan, uh, Tobias, Tobbe, Robin, and Rodrigo. So, just yes, switch the computer and we can begin. <coughs> so, we have uh, had this challenge of uh, Um Okay. <laughs> it's okay, I think. <laughs> yeah, uh, and we call our concept the soft house concept. And we are basically going directly into the live working Android app prototype that we have developed during this 24 hours. So if we can get the web page up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so this is the app. Uh, it's, uh, it's working now, it's uh, live on, you can clone it on GitHub. Um, and uh, it's basically the focus here, we have, uh, what we have focused on is uh, mainly the short trip that we do on a daily, daily basis. So um, um, we have uh, a map here that's uh, now showing um, now showing uh, a, a person that is on on our way to me uh, and to pick me up, and the estimated arrival is two minutes thirty seconds uh, and counting down. Uh, so it's not using live data, but it's it's uh, using the Google API for for for. And uh, what we have focused on uh, mostly are the um, uh, why should the drivers use this app. Uh, so we have involved a lot of gamification and live stats uh, to show, uh, yeah, we have some uh, <laughs> funny achievements here. Um, uh, and so we see I have uh, achieved my first uh, first medal here. I have driven my first, first um, passenger. Um, and then um, uh, we also have the... Um, uh, we also have the stats that shows how many, how much carbon dioxide have I saved using using this uh, using this uh, co-riding, um, both as a passenger and, and as a driver, uh, and uh, you get stats on that and uh, points. So uh, yeah, you want to be better than the rest. So that's the whole point of the gamification stuff, um, and then we have the. Uh, yeah, this app I can tell you it's uh, built with uh, uh, Ionic and uh, Apache Cordova, uh, so it's an Angular web app, but it's wrapped native. So 
It's downloads from the Google Play Store, not up there now, but uh, yeah, it's a prototype. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yeah, I think uh, that's basically it. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> so thank you. Thank you very much. It's really nice to see that uh, you have been working so hard to really get it up and running as well. And I think the jury has a hard, hard uh, task to to figure out those who have been coding a lot and those being concept. But I think you can manage that. Uh, we have a jury of the last challenge as well. Could you rise, please? <laughs> so this is the one who's gonna wanna put you on trial, <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You are. Paros is also with it. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we are now taking a half an hour break uh, for the jury to decide what who was the winner, and then we'll be back in this room uh, to uh, announce the winners. Okay. Thank you very much, and uh, be back in even half an hour.